So another example here is which of the following is the possible graph of derivative of fx? You want to find out that, okay? Which of these are the possible graph for the derivative of f of x? So what do you think? What do you think the, uh, the possible graph? So this is the function fx. Is this the f prime graph of f prime? Is this the graph of f prime? Is this the graph of f prime? Is this the graph of f prime? Okay, we will see uh, if all these figures, okay, for possibility. Okay, let us observe the given question first. Here, the function is decreasing left of two. So f is decreasing in the, for x less than two, and f is increasing, right? For x greater than two, and f, is neither increasing nor decreasing at x equals to 2. This is at x equals 2. It is neither increasing nor decreasing, right? So uh, at, at x equals to 2, non, right? Is non, non is uh, neither decreasing, neither decreasing nor increasing, right? At x equals to 2. Okay. Now when f is decreasing, then the slope must be negative, right? So what do we need? The slope must be negative here, meaning uh, meaning f prime is the slope, right? Must be negative here. And when f is increasing, the slope must be positive. Slope is given by f prime, right? So f prime must be positive here. And when f is neither decreasing nor increasing, then f prime must be zero because slope is zero at that time, okay? Now let us look at which one, which of these figure have that. On this figure A, the, the slope, this f prime is the graph of the slope. f prime is the derivative or the slope. And this is the graph of f prime, meaning this is the graph of the slope. You see that? So on the left of two, f prime is negative. Okay? And on the right of the two, f prime is positive here. Okay? Look at this. On the left of two, it is decreasing. Okay? On the right of two, it is increasing because the slope is positive there. And at 2, it is 0. It looks like this is one correct answer. How about B? On the left of 2, f prime is positive. Slope is positive because it is above x-axis, right? Above x-axis means slope is positive on the left and on the right, it is negative. It's just opposite of that here. So here, the slope is negative everywhere and 0 at 2. Because the graph is below means it is negative, right? The slope is, the function is negative. F prime is negative there. Meaning the slope is negative everywhere. At 2, it is 0. Everywhere else, it is negative. But that is not true because it must be negative only on the left side. But positive, it should be positive on the right, right side. Why did I say positive and negative? Because look at this function. Left of 2, the graph is below, meaning it is negative. Right of 2, the graph is above, meaning it is positive. That's what I'm saying for every figure, okay? On the left of 2, graph is below, it is negative. On the right of 2, it is negative as well. But that is not true for the, for the slope here. And for the D, for the left of 2, it is positive. For the right of 2, it is positive. At 2, it is 0. So, is it the right figure? No. Why? Because the, it says on the left of 2, it must be negative. On the right of 2, it must be positive. But it is non-negative everywhere. Right? It is non-positive everywhere. So they are not the they are not the right. They are not the right. So only this is the right figure for the derivative. Okay, guys. So let us see one more example where we will see the function does not have the derivative. Before I give you another example, let me give you alternative definition of the derivative at a point. Derivative of a function at a point. Okay. If y equals to f of x be a function then the derivative of this function at a point x equals to c, okay, x equals to c, we denote by f prime of c, right? It is given by limit x tends to c, fx minus fc over x minus c, okay? So limit x tends to c, fx minus fc over x minus c, all right? So let us do this example really quickly just to give you how to find out the derivative at a point using this definition. So let me find out f prime of 2, okay? So solution is f prime of 2 is the formula is limit x tends to 2, right? Because c is like a 2 here. Uh, f of x minus f of 2 divided by x minus 2, right? So how much is that? Limit x tends to 
2. What is fx? fx is x squared, right? We can see this is x squared minus what is f2? It is 4, right? Because replace x by 2 over x minus 2. You see that? So how much would that be? Limit x tends to 2. If you plug in that limit directly here, you will get 4 minus 4 over 2 minus 2. That is 0 over 0. So you need to simplify. So if you simplify the top, you will get x minus 2 x plus 2 divided by x minus 2 there, right? So you see that? Now you can cancel out those. You cancel x minus 2 and x minus 2. What is left is x plus 2, right? So now plug in the limit after we cancel out. If you plug in the limit, what do you get? You get basically replace x by 2. So 2 plus 2, that is 4. So I could find out that limit uh, it is not, I would not say it is different from the previous, this formula is different from the previous formula. It is just some substitution we made, but this may be a little bit easier than the previous, uh, previous uh, formula, okay, to find out the derivative of a function at a point. All right, let us do this example. Find f prime of 1 for fx equals to 1 over x minus 1. So what is the formula again? So the formula is f prime of 1 is equals to limit x tends to 1 okay and uh, f of x minus f of 1 it is like x tends to c fx minus fc over x minus uh, 1 right now let us do that so what do you get you uh, you get uh, you get basically fx is 1 over x minus 1 minus what is f1 f of 1 will be 1 over 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 look at this this is uh, this is not good, right? Because look at this one. This is 1 over 0, right? Which is infinity, right? So this is not finite, okay? We don't like that infinity thing there, okay? Also, another thing is there is x minus 1. When x tends to um, 1, then it will be 1 minus 1 there again, okay? But you, you could work with that, but still you got this as infinity, meaning that the derivative does not exist. So at x equals to 1 f prime of 1 or f prime of x does not exist why this does not exist what may be the reason let us look at the graph if you draw the graph of this function 1 over x minus 1 you will see like this okay on the left side on the left side of that the graph will look like kind of this is like a, you will see the asymptote there on the left side the graph will look like this and on the right side the graph will look like this look at this the function is not continuous at one okay so from here you can see that if a function is not continuous at a point then the derivative does not exist at that point so if f of x is not continuous continuous at x equals to c then f prime of c does not exist if the function is not continuous then the derivative does not exist there if there is a gap if the function is not defined then the derivative does not exist that's what it says okay so for example if uh, some graph of a function is like this and then there is a like that or then uh, so if a graph of a function is like this then the derivative at, at that point a does not exist so f prime of a does not exist because the function is not continuous there but sometimes the function can be continuous but the derivative does not exist let, look this, let, let us look, look at this example okay I want to do this example so I want to find out f prime at 4 okay so solution f prime at 4 is equals to what is the formula limit x tends to 4 x tends to c I'm using that formula right and then f x minus f 4 divided by x minus 4. So if you plug in that values, you will get limit x tends to 4. This fx is absolute value x minus 4, right? Minus, what is absolute value of 4 minus 4? That is 0, right? Thus, you don't need to write that. So x minus 4. Basically, this function is absolute value of x minus 4 over x minus 4. So how do I get rid of absolute, the value of absolute, this absolute value sign then? So you need to go from left and right, right? So this is equals to limit. If you go from the left, x tends to 4 minus x minus 4 absolute value over x minus 4 without absolute value, right? 
this becomes if you go from the left what do you get if you go from the left means you are going from the number less than 4 right so like 3.9 minus 4 3.9 minus 4 and then 3.99 minus 4 so if you do that the up well the top value will be positive because of the absolute value right but the bottom value will be negative if you go from the left side okay but they will be the same value same number but the the top one will be positive sign the bottom one will be negative sign if you go from the left side because it will look like look like 3.99 minus 4 right so it is like 3.99 minus 4 over 3.99 minus 4 so on the top because of the absolute value you'll get 3.99 minus 4 will be 0 0.001 0 0.01 basically so 0.01 but absolute value of that negative 0.01 will be just positive 0.01 divided by this will be negative 0.01 so basically positive number over negative number but the same number you will cancel out so the answer will be one the negative one the answer will be negative one but if you go from limit x tends to 4 plus and then x minus 4 over x minus 4 you're going to 4 from positive so it is like 4.1 minus 4 over 4.1 minus 4. Both will be positive, right? The top will be positive, bottom will be positive. So you cancel out and then it is 1. So if you go that limit from the left, it is negative 1. If you go from the limit from the right, it is positive 1. So basically this limit does not exist. The limit does not exist means the derivative does not exist. So f prime of 4 does not, does not exist why let us look at the graph of this function okay if you draw the graph of this function it will look like this x minus 4 the graph will look like this this is 4 right the graph will look like this like a v-shaped graph okay you see that there is a sharp corner there although it is continuous the function is continuous okay the function is continuous there is no gap at 4 it is 0 on the left of 4 if you go to 4, it is close to 0. And the, from the right, also it is close to 0. It is continuous. The left limit and the right limit of this exist. But the left limit and the right limit of this ratio does not exist. Meaning, the derivative does not exist. So, meaning that the derivative of a function does not exist. If there is a sharp corner like this. A sharp corner. Okay. The derivative of the function does not exist if there is a gap. If there is a gap, the derivative does not, does not exist. If there is a sharp corner, the derivative does not exist either. So this is the way that how can how we can determine whether the derivative exists or does not, does not exist by looking at the graph. If there is a sharp corner, or sometimes you will see a graph like this. Like that. So at that point and that point, the derivative does not exist. Okay, Or you can say that at this point and that point, the derivative does not exist. And all other points, the derivative exists. And here, at this point, at this point, the derivative does not exist. At this point, the derivative does not exist because there is a, a gap. There is a there is a sharp corner. There is what we call cusp. There is a cusp. Also, the derivative does not exist there. 